Good evening everybody, Orange Jay here with another War of the Visions video, and today we are doing the much requested top 10 TMRs, or Trustmaster Rewards, to level up in my opinion. This is a follow-up video to my uh, last top 10 where I talked about limit breaks that I thought were worth leveling, and people were like, hey, what about Trustmaster Rewards? And I was like, hey, I guess I'll do a video on that. So here we go. Um, first, I want to give you a uh, rundown of how I made the list, right? Like, what criteria was I using in order to do this? So, first of all, I'm only going to do it to, like, TMRs that are good. Uh, there's not a ton of terrible TMRs out there, but I'm not going to recommend somebody level a TMR just because it scales well or something like that. So, I'm only going to talk about ones that I think are actually useful. Then... The leveling process needs to significantly increase the power of the TMR. Uh, some TMRs, like Limit Breaks, just don't scale really well with levels or just don't level up at all. Um, so I'm not going to include those, even though there's a ton of good TMRs that aren't going to be on this list, just because I don't think they like, I don't think they're your best investment, not bang for your buck kind of thing, right? And then if there's a couple similar TMRs, I'm gonna group them together into one ranking. And so that's my justification for how I made the list. Now let's get to the list with number 10. And number 10, this is gonna be my first uh, group. This is gonna be the first two I put together. And I'm gonna combine Mashiri and Ayaka here because I think they have very similar TMRs and I wanted to get them both into this list somehow. So, Mashiri's TMR, the Steel Maiden's Necklace, is an accessory. Good accessory stats on it, right? 342 HP, 5 defense, 8 spirit, especially now with stat stacking. You get a little bit of a bonus from wearing this uh, that you didn't get before because you had some armor on that gave a lot of these same stats. Now, the skill on it's really good. Knight's Blessing reduces the damage taken of your group by 10 to 30%, right? So there's the key. The leveling it up reduces the damage from 10 to 30. Or you get what I'm saying, right? It scales from 10 to 30%. That's really nice. It hits in that little cross-shaped AoE around you. Now, Ayaka's, the Sacred Step, uh, I actually like the stats on Ayaka's better for an accessory because it gives that 5 agility. Um, but the TMR skill only reduces damage up to 20%. So you can see how I kind of justified like tying them together here. Um, the scaling on Ayaka's goes from 5 to 20. So there it is again. Like at level or at rank 1, a 5% damage reduction is kind of like, eh, you know. But at rank 20, a 20% damage reduction is significant. Uh, it's for 3 turns for allies and it has the bonus of dispelling a whole bunch of status effects. Now, I want to talk about the AI for a second here and auto PvP. They don't really like to use Ayaka's uh, TMR. Now, it's great for manual PvP if you've leveled it. That shield is just really nice to have in a fight, um, etc. But I didn't rank it higher on the list because the AI won't really use it unless they can dispel like poison or something. Oh, they love to drop this buff if somebody's poisoned. They're like, oh, I've got the perfect thing. We'll dispel that poison. And you're like, cool. <laughs> Thanks. Would have taken the shield earlier, but whatever. All right. Anyway, that's number 10. Uh, I think both those TMRs are worth spending some pots on if you use them in manual PvP especially. So let's go to number 9. And number 9 is going to be one that I think a lot of people have. It's a TMR that I feature on my channel quite a bit. And that's Mont's TMR, the Lion Emblem. Now, the stats on it are... Okay, right? Like, it's definitely a bruiser tank TMR. Gives you defense and spirit, so that's cool. But really, what you like about it is the ability for this TMR to, like, have your AI position early in a fight. Unlike Sacred Step, the AI loves using Mont's TMR, and they will use it on their first turn all the time. So if you don't want your people moving forward, you can have them step towards your teammates and buff their agility. Now, why do I suggest leveling it? Because the agility scales from 5 to 15%. So if this is a TMR that you're going to be using regularly to help position your people, you might as well throw some levels into this thing and get a nice agility buff for your squad. So Mont's TMR, a solid investment. I put it at number 9 on the list. Uh, let's go down to the next one. Number 8. Okay, 
This is my second grouping of TMRs. It's the last time I'm going to group on this list. But I'm going to group Cecil and Medina. Put them together at number 8. So Cecil's TMR, the Saints Circlet, is an accessory. Gives really nice bruiser stats, right? 362 HP, 42 attack, 6 defense, and 12 crit. Yeah, your bruisers are going to like to wear this. And it gives them a really nice buff with a nice big AoE on it. Holy Knight's Cheer increases attack, magic, and bravery for your allies. The scaling is pretty good, too. The attack goes from 20 to 30%, the magic from 20 to 30%, and the bravery from 4 to 10. Um, the AI likes to use it. It's a good TMR and worth leveling a little bit, in my opinion. Maybe to level 10, get that buff to 25%, something like that. Now, it's grouped with Medina's, who actually I like leveling more when you're talking about investing in levels, but I wanted to put these two together. So let's look at it. Kaleido Moon. Um, what is better and what's worse about Kaleido Moon than Cecil's TMR? Well, for one, one thing that's worse is its armor. Um, I tend to not like armor TMRs as much as I like accessory TMRs because I feel like there's really good armor in the game that you can just craft, but there's not a ton of really great accessories you can craft. I have an easier time equipping accessories more often. But anyway, Kaleido Moon is a moon that sits on Medina's head and the people at Gumi, probably the same guy who made Thancred's uh, Limit Break, if you get it, you get it, uh, decided that this was an armor. So uh, apparently all those clothes Medina was wearing is not her armor. The big moon on her head is her armor. You whatever. Okay, it doesn't give agility. It gives 10 spirit and 8 accuracy, 320 HP. Okay, whatever. Those stats are fine. The buff on it's really good though. Increase AP, 20 to 50 for three turns for allies. That's the amount of AP they're accumulating. That's really nice. Then it increases attack and magic, scaling from 10 to 30. I think the buff on Kaleido Moon is better than the buff on Cecil's. However, I think Cecil's is easier to use in a group because it's an accessory. So that's kind of why I put them together here. Either way, if you have one of these and you're leveling it, good. I like it. I'm going to put them at number eight. Okay, number seven. Let's move on to Glacella's TMR. Uh, it's the White Wolf's armor. It's uh, Again, it's an armor, but it's a good armor. So, it gives 424 HP, 9 defense, 4 spirit, and 8 accuracy. Those stats by themselves are not good. However, in a group that is targeting slashing teams, you get War Maiden's Vitality the buff. It's going to give you from 10 to 20 um, AP when you cast it, right? So it is an AP generating TMR. That's important. And it scales literally twice as much. So. When you use this at max level, let's say you max this out, you're going to generate 10 AP because the skill costs 20 TP to use. And if you don't know, you always generate half the amount of TP that you use in AP to cast a skill. Then you'll gain another 20 from the skill itself. So it's a nice boost to your AP at the beginning of a fight. Plus, you gain slash resistance all the way from 5 to 15%, depending on how much you've leveled it. So, in a slash-resisting team, uh, where maybe you have somebody who you need to use an accessory and you don't have, like, a golden armor for them or something like that, hey, 15% slash resist, pretty nice. And if you're building up a new account, this is a decent armor for your tank and I think worth putting some points into overall, right? Okay, that's my number seven. Let's go to number six. All right, number six. I'm going to put Yerma and her TMR on here. Now, Yerma's TMR, the, Her the Herculean Waist Cloth. It is a cloth armor with 440 HP, 8 defense, and 4 spirit. Again, underwhelming stats for armor. However, the buff on this is really great situationally. Um, it's going to give you increased attack from 10 to 40%, so you see the scaling is really good, and it's going to increase your accuracy from 30 all the way up to 60 for three turns 60 accuracy is like you're gonna hit somebody so if you find yourself in a spot where you're like man i'm fighting all these evasion teams i need to have a way of killing them and they just dodge hey if you've invested into yerma and you have some potions 
Maybe you just stick some potions into this TMR, get it to level 10, get it to level 15, scale that accuracy and attack up, and see if you can one-hit some squishy evasion targets that you otherwise might miss. I think it's worth investing in if you need it for that reason, and for that reason, I'm going to put it on my list at number 6. Alright, let's move on. Number 5. Okay, number five is going to be another piece of armor. I'm going to talk about Rain and his armor, Rain's clothes. Uh, to start, I actually really like the stats on this armor. Um, for a TMR, I think it really carries its weight. So it's cloth armor, gives 496 HP, which is pretty good, and 14 spirit, which is pretty good. Um, you're only going to want to use this when you're fighting magic teams. Not only because of the stats, but also because of the ability. Um, Guardian's Fighting Spirit is an AoE buff that casts in the whole square around your target. Um, it has one cast, costs 42 TP, which again, the more TP it costs, the more AP you're generating. And it increases the spirit of everyone it hits from 10 at level 1 to 25 at level 20. So, if you find yourself in a really magic heavy meta, or maybe in a PV. Uh, e situation where you're fighting a really heavy magic using boss this TMR is a nice investment for really boosting the spirit of your group and increasing your survivability now again like Yerma's very situationally useful but remember I'm not grading these TMRs on just how great they are they just need to be good enough to be usable and I'm grading them on how worth it is to invest potions in them um the spirit increase on this scales really nicely, so therefore, I'm putting it at number 5 and saying there's plenty of situations where this could be good. If you're thinking about investing in it, it's not a poor investment. Alright, move on. Number 4. I'm going to talk about Lucia for number 4 and her TMR, the Bewitching Boots. Now, these are an accessory, so already, hey, I like accessories as my TMRs. And it gives 142 HP, 5 defense, 7 agility. Ooh, 7 agility on TMR is real nice. And 10 evade. Alright, that's pretty good. Now, only girls can wear these, I believe. Yeah, I think only girls can wear this TMR. So there's a little bit, whatever. Um, the ability on it, though, is limiter off. And this is a really good ability. First of all, it increases your range by 1 for 3 turns. That's situationally good, doesn't scale at all. Uh, but the other buff increases agility from 10 to 25% for 3 turns for yourself. A 25% agility buff, you guys, is nothing to laugh at. Um, tweaking agility is one of the higher level things you do in PvP in this game to make your people um, either synced up or unsynced up, depending on how you want them. And this TMR is really nice for doing that if you have somebody who you're like man i just need her to go right after the other dps and you can slap this on them maybe that buff will put them at the agility range you need them to be and a 25 percent agility buff you guys we're talking massive amounts of agility for somebody like an evasion unit or something like that really good tmr and scales nicely with levels so i'm going to put it at number four on my list all right number three Number three is another TMR that's good for evasion units, and it's our newest TMR in the game. That's Nivlu's TMR. So, the B Clan Mask, an accessory. Hey, I like accessories. 312 HP, pretty nice for an accessory, and 15 Evade. Cool, good stats. What about the ability? Inherited Bewitching Art increases evasion rate from 10 at level 1 to 30 at level 20. Big scaling. And it has a big AoE on it. So if you're running an evasion squad, this is an awesome buff to drop on your party early. And it'll hit everyone if you just make your movement right. And 30 extra evasion, ooh, ooh, that's nice. That's real nice. Um, it's a good TMR, really good for evasion teams, and scales well. So that's why it gets number three on my list. And let's head on. Number two. Okay, number two and number one should be no big surprise for anybody. But number two, I'm going to go with the bird-haired girl herself, and that's Oldoa and her TMR, Oldoan's apron. Oldoan apron. Yeah, it's the pants that she's really kind of not wearing. Anyway, they are an accessory, 
great. We love accessories. 158 HP, okay. 12 accuracy, that's nice. And 9 crit, that's nice. Ah, this seems like a DPS item, and it really is. So, first of all, um, Inherited Tyranny, the ability, grants a 5% AP regen buff for 3 turns. That's not extremely good, but it's good enough to unlock somebody like Kane. This is about all the AP regen he needs, because he has good self buffs, to be able to do more or less whatever he wants in a fight. But then check out the second part of this. Increases defense penetration from 30 all the way up to 50 for three turns for yourself. You guys, ignoring 50 defense on an enemy for somebody like Kane, you're talking one-shot territory. And you're talking one-shot territory on people even tankier than like Little Leela or Ayaka. This TMR is a really, really great TMR. And the defense pin scales really nicely with levels. This is one of the few TMRs in the game that I have leveled all the way to 20. And it is one of the few TMRs I would tell anybody who's seriously PvPing in this game. And they're thinking about investing. I love this one. Um, it's really annoying when your DPS hits somebody and they live with like 40 HP or 100 HP. And I bet you if they had a 50 defense penetration buff, they'd have killed that target. So that's my thoughts on this one. Easy number two for me. And that sets up the most obvious number one on a list of all time. That is the thing people re-roll their whole accounts for. And that's Jiza and the Illusory Bell. So if you don't know somehow at this point, the Illusory Bell is the most broken individual thing in this game with Little Leela Halloween coming in second. Anyway, um, the Illusory Bell, 142 HP. All right, whatever. Eight defense. You're like, this bell gives eight defense? Who decided? Okay. Seven agility. You're like, this bell gives seven agility? 14 accuracy? What? How does this have, thing have such good stats on it? It's already great. And then you look at the effect and you're like, revitalize. Grants auto restore 10 to 25% three turn. Hold on. Is that talking about AP? Yeah. You guys, that's talking about AP. You're talking about a 25% AP regen for three turns. You're talking about your non-mage characters having mage levels of AP in a fight. So yeah, that means Kane can jump every turn. That means Oldoa can just unleash hell every turn. Basically, Frederica wants to barrage three times? Go for it, girl! Barrage all day! Yeah, it's great. Like, legitimately great. Um, if I was advising somebody who's just making a new account, I'd say, hey, the first character you should uh, MLB is Jiza for the bells. Um, maybe Jiza will be good someday. She's really not yet. But her bells are worth leveling the character for only. Um, yeah, they're fantastic. So that's my list. Um, I know there's a lot of people who will disagree with maybe where I had things on the list. I base this a lot on how much I use their TMRs. Um, and you know what? Like my last list. I would say you could swap places with some of the other people on this list. Um, with everything but number one. I, that number one's a runaway winner. Um, but I hope this helped you guys out. If you have a TMR you're thinking about leveling, please drop a comment in the comments and I will respond. I'm, if you say, hey, I want to level this TMR, is it worth it? I'll let you know. Uh, yeah, hit that subscribe button if you're, already, if you're not already subscribed to the channel. Um, give some of the other videos a watch. And I want you guys to have a great week, have a great day, and I will see you in the next video.